Good morning. Happy Tuesday, everybody. Hope you're doing well. I had just finished making my pot of coffee here, my espresso, and I wanted to pour it. I got to start it just a couple minutes late. Sorry to get going late here. Hope you're doing well. I don't know if you can see. Can you see the steam coming off of that, though? Oh, that's good stuff. Maybe. I don't know if the light... Oh, yeah, yeah. You can see it there. Nice. Yeah, nice sunny day over in Poland. Awesome. Yeah, the weather's finally starting to get a little nicer here in Michigan, too. Well, we were outside a lot of yesterday. That was fun. All right. We got a couple things today. We're going to talk about Project 3. I'll go over my solution for that. And then we'll get to exceptions. Um, sorry I missed you last Thursday morning. Um, oh... That was, a, that was a rough day, but we got through it. Uh, so we'll talk about exceptions today. We'll get to advanced file I.O. on Thursday, and then we'll move on. And uh, we've decided not to have an individual Project 4. We've just got enough other stuff going on. Um, so we're not going to have a project to work on this week, and we'll just jump into the final project next week. Okay? So hopefully that'll go well for you folks. Um, and then... I'm losing track of who I've told what, so if I told you before, apologies, but if not, it's good to hear it. Um, the score that you get on the final project, your percentage score there, um, what I'll do for you fine folks is I'll take that score and I'll use it to replace your worst scoring individual project of those first four. I mean, really just the first three, because zero was nothing. So... If you didn't do so hot on one of these individual projects, um, what I can do is take that final project score and replace your score for the individual project with your final project score. So the goal is everyone gets 100% on the final project. I'd like every individual or pair who's working on it to complete it, complete it successfully, and be, you know, I don't know if proud is the right word, but proud of what you did. Right? Have, have a nice working final project there that you can uh, show off on our final project presentations on 429 if you're able to make it synchronously if you can't make it synchronously we'll we'll arrange uh, you can present at an alternative time or you can do a recording or we'll, we, we'll figure something out um, for these presentations if you can't make it live but the goal is everyone will make it um, if you can and then we can present show off our projects show what we did because um, you'll have a chance to, you know, add your little flair, your touches, uh, whatever you, you think there. Uh, when it comes to graphical user interface programming, there's a whole lot to it, which is really cool. There, there's a lot of ways you can customize it, you can design it, you can make it look however you think is going to be a great usable way. Uh, there's a whole field of study in usability and um, human-computer interactions. No, no, I don't think you need a camera if you don't want Scholar. No big deal. Um... You know, I've, uh, we, we've never been a requirement so far, so I'm not going to throw that in last minute and say, hey, you, you must have your camera on, so. We'll, we'll make, we'll make a, figure out how to make it work. Don't worry. Yeah, I, don't, I don't want to be stressful, but I want it to be a chance for you to show off your work. Uh, that, that's sort of the goal. And then again, you know, um, usually that's a, a pizza day, but we're not in person, so apologies. I, I don't even know why I mentioned it. Maybe just to make you feel bad that we're not in person. I don't know. Um, but that, that's the plan. That's the plan. Um, and we'll have some time coming up uh, April 22nd and, and 27th. Um, just set aside for any work on the final project. Again, usually we'd be paired up and we can meet in person to do that. But um, So get to know your classmates. I think um, we started a discussion... Or was that the other class um, in D2L? If you want to get to know each other or find a, a partner, you can look there. You can post in Discord. Um, we've got some options for you. Okay. So let's get going here. I'm going to fire up NetBeans. 
and you know we have a small little problem is that I already solved the problem. Hey, good morning, Prof. Tuesday, I had already solved project three for the evening class. I used a little skeleton um, that we had talked about on Tuesday, last Tuesday morning of like, hey, you, your classes might look like this, uh, that sort of thing. So I'm actually going to go back up a little bit here in the repository, which is cool. Remember, Git, when it, it has a commit, that's the snapshot, that's the point in time, you can always go back to those, which is cool. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back to that snapshot. I'm going to copy the project, and we'll go from there. So I'm going to find my project here. I'm going to go to my history, and I can back it up. So this was Project 3 Ideas. So this is where we want to be, where we had this Project 3 Ideas. So I want to get back to here. You know, I don't think it's going to let me do it nicely in the UI, but that's okay. We have other, other ways of doing this. This is when you have to kick Git just a little bit and use some of the other fancier, fancier pieces of it. Let's see. All right. Let me go find my directory here. Okay. So what I can do, this is one, two, three, four, five commits back. Okay. So I'm going to get master uh, main and then the little tilde and I think if I put in a five here it should go back five and let's see see what it gives me here nope too far too far we wanted four I counted wrong the the first one was right at main let's check out at four Okay, yep, and that was the last commit here was Project 3 Ideas. Look at that. This is working well. That was the sound. Oh, I had a joke. Let's see. I think this was a good one. Where did it go? While this stuff loads, we got to find it. Come on, close the project. Close the project. And then what I can do, I can grab my project three ideas, and I'm just gonna make a copy of it here. Come on, and this will be project three morning. Okay, and then actually I'm gonna move all of that. I'm gonna cut that out, put it on my desktop for a second. And then I can go back to my main branch. Probably could have left it there, but that's okay. Now I'm going to put it back. Now we're we fixed it all, and now it says, hey, there's some new files. Look at that. We got a whole bunch of other stuff we need. Okay, all the morning stuff. Awesome. I think these are all fine, yeah. That's all fine. Good morning. All right. There we go. Got a new computer and NetBeans actually loads. All right. That is exciting. I know uh, NetBeans can be rather slow. Which is, which is sad when it's so slow. But start NetBeans. Go get your cup of coffee and come back. It's uh, always a good excuse to go get some coffee. All right, well, here we are. Yes, definitely love love the coffee here. This is my fresh uh, little mocha pot espresso, and it all fits in my nice new mug here. I'm super excited. And which is funny, like their logo is only on one side of this mug, so. Usually I'm right-handed, and I drink this way, so I would see what's on it, and you guys would just see a gray mug. But I'm mousing with the right hand and drinking with the left hand, 
So you guys see the logo. I still have not agreed to give me an affiliate link, despite me having the hat, the hoodie, the mug. <laughs> not profit. If you, if you leave university with nothing else, they'll be with an addiction to coffee. See, mine started way before university. Um, it was a fun story for my addiction to coffee. The first job I worked, my, my first full-time job, I should say, um, I worked was in an office inside the library. I don't know why that's where it was, but that was where the IT office was uh, at the Auburn Hills campus. And I did desktop support with the, the team there. And we had a little office inside the library, and I didn't have a kitchenette because it was a little office inside a library. It wasn't, I don't know, designed to be an office suite with a kitchenette and, you know, running water and all that stuff. So if you wanted water, you had to go out into the library, out the library, down the hall to where the drinking fountain was. So that made it a little bit um, harder to go get a drink of water when you were thirsty. But we had a coffee pot, and one of the, the guys there was definitely a coffee addict, and he always had coffee going. And he was happy to share, because he was a nice, nice, kind fellow. So I learned to drink coffee when I was thirsty. And of the one, two, three, four, five people in the office, the only one who drank coffee with cream and sugar was the boss. And all the other guys made fun of him for it. So I learned to drink my coffee black. Which is good. It's a, a much better way to drink it anyway. Yeah, don't you drink coffee when you're thirsty? Okay. Anyway, that was a nonsense story, but that's okay. Let's go take a look at the assignment here and see if we can't knock this one out. Okay, so carts have max speed, acceleration, current speed, a brake speed, and an item here. Okay, so we need some more attributes. We need a private item item. We need a private int for max speed. We need a private int for the current speed, right? How fast they're actually going. We need a private int for their brake speed. And a private int for and you know acceleration actually that wasn't a great one. This is more like max acceleration. I wasn't, wasn't too fond of how I named that here, because what this was saying, this is the fastest that they can speed up here. Just don't drink coffee. Oh, I guess you like tea, don't you, sweet tea? So, and tea's okay, too. Although sweet tea is likely to kill me. Um, that will definitely uh, do bad things for my diabetes, the, the sweet tea. But it's okay. Okay, so we got max speed, current speed, brake speed, acceleration, the item... Right, and, oh, maybe protected? Yeah, I like that idea instead of private. Let's go protected. So that my subclasses can get at these attributes. Because we know cart was this abstract base class here. When you create a cart, you give it a max speed as max acceleration and as brake speed here. And we'll go set those. So this dot max speed. Speed is the max speed. This dot max acceleration is the max acceleration. And this dot... Brake speed, oh my goodness, this dot brake speed is the brake speed. Okay, let me pull this down here a little bit. There we go. Okay, so we got those, and then what else? Remember, the constructor's job is to set these to value, so item is null. We don't have an item. Until we go pick one up, it's null. We have to be careful with nulls. Remember, nulls give you those null pointer exceptions. If you try and use items that are null, use objects that are null, bad stuff happens. And then we also have a current speed is zero. Okay. All right, so far. So we've got our attributes here in cart for our base class here. We need a way to accelerate to increase their current speed by up to their max acceleration. Break reduces their speed by up to the break speed. And get methods for all of our attributes and a method for use item. Now, break. Okay. Oh my goodness. I've been spelling break the wrong way, and no one has told me. Break. Look at that. Break speed. I forgot to do... Okay, let me... Sure, I'll just fix it here. Folks, you make me look dumb out here. 
You gotta you gotta tell me when I have spelling errors. That makes a whole lot more sense. Okay. There we go. It's the wrong break. <laughs> I think I broke it. <laughs> oh man. Okay. I'm gonna blame that on not having nope, you know, I wrote that the other time. I wrote it no, I wrote it correctly here, but wrongly here. Wrongly? Right here. <laughs> you did it in the whole project. Uh that's okay. There's no points for spelling. Um, so, although I will tell you, if you misspell things on your resume, it does not bode well for you getting an interview. So, like, there's no points for spelling, but spelling is important in certain things, okay? Like, I'm, I'm going to forgive spelling mistakes in your code, but if you apply for a job, your resume should not have typos in it. Which is a whole other can of worms, but that's okay. Uh, just, okay. Yeah, and, and attention to detail is important on resumes. All right, I, I've, let me, can I, I can do this, right? Let me see. Got it. just want to make sure I'm opening on the right monitor. All right. Let's see. C minus minus in the resume? Yeah. Ouch. Let's see. One of these ones here. Which one was it? Is this one there? Yeah. Okay. So this was a list of skills that a candidate presented. This was in their skill list. Oh, that's kind of small. Can I zoom it in? Can zoom it in. Can zoom it in. Okay. I have a problem with this one right here. I know it's silly, but this is your resume, right? You should spend a little bit more time making sure your resume doesn't look dumb. Okay, especially if the bullet point is detail oriented. Right, is that is that fair? Right, and you have this amount of tabbing on all of your other bullet points, this amount of tabbing space, and then you decide to double tab this one here. I know Word is obnoxious, but, like, if you're going to say you're detail-oriented, I don't know, th this person is likely not going to get an interview, which is, okay, sure. Anyway, where were we? Spelling. Yeah, in your code? I'll, I'll forgive that, right? I think they meant object-oriented. <laughs> It was a weird list too, which is, um, you know, I mean, the resume is not the only thing, but when I've got nine candidates to look at and yours has typos and you're detail oriented with mistakes, um, that takes you off the, the short list. Okay. Anyway, th these are good. These are good life skills tips for you folks, for sure. For sure. Okay. So we've got cart here. We need a way to accelerate. So public void accelerate here. Uh, that's probably the amount, right? Acceleration amount. I don't know. Right, ours. We're just dealing in units here. Did I spell that wrong? It probably did, but that's okay. So we're gonna take my this or my current speed plus equals the acceleration amount. Oh, but I want to make sure that it's not greater than the max. So I have to check that first. Okay. So. I need to look. So if my acceleration amount is greater than my max acceleration, that was no good. I'm going to change my acceleration amount to the max. Right? If you try and speed up 100 units and your max acceleration is 5 units, I'm going to just kick it back down to 5. Then I can take my current speed and add to it the acceleration amount. Then I want to check to make sure I didn't go too fast. So then I can check if my current speed is greater than my max speed. Max speed we'll kick you back down. Nope. Nope. Curly braces there, please. We'll take my current speed. We'll set it at the max. Boom. Okay. So sanity check the value, right? Add to it and then make sure we didn't go too fast. You could check first if you wanted. doesn't matter. Um, either, either approach gets the same job done. Okay. So we can accelerate by some amount. We can also break. A public void break. By the end, I don't know, break amount, is that? Break amount, I don't know. I'm not, not proud of that term there, but I'm, I'm sure that makes sense. We do the same thing. We're going to check if my 
brake amount is greater than my max brake speed. Max brake. Max brake. What did I call it? Brake speed. You know, my brake speed. Right? If it is, then set it to the max. Okay. I want that one to be max as well. Brake speed. Then reduce our speed. Current speed minus equals the brake speed. Brake amount. Really want that to be once the name something else. And then we're going to check if my current speed. Now this time we're going to check if we went with less than zero. We can set current speed to zero. Okay. Whoa, that was. What did I do there? Equal zero. A little format. Okay. You guys like those conditional lines? I, I'm never a big fan of conditional lines, so we could write those if we wanted. Remember those one-liners? You say break amount equals, and then you give it your expression. If this is true, then you get the break speed. Else you get the break amount. Right? Uh, did we do that right? Does this need parentheses? Probably needs parentheses. Nope. Oh, question mark and then a colon. This is why I hate these things. There we go. Okay. Yeah, yep, yep. Thanks, EI. E go. Yeah, I, I mean, if you like this better than this, go for it. You can do the same thing for your current speed. I just, I'm not, I don't, I don't know. Not a big fan of those. But maybe I just leave a comment out. Did I tell you one time, you know how our, our exams are all open book, open notes, open internet stuff? Um, apparently one of the questions had a similar solution. I forget what it is. I usually spend some time Googling to make sure like you can't find a solution. But it was a similar solution, or maybe it was on Chegg, where you needed an account. It might have been on Chegg, where you needed a paid account, and I didn't have one, so I missed it. Um, seven people used one of these ternary expressions which they had never previously used in any of their code they had provided to me. You know what's suspicious? When you use one of these ternary expressions and you have never used one before in any of the code you've ever written. That's suspicious. Cite your sources, folks. Yeah, seven people had to retake that class. Um, that, that was unfortunate. And there was a lot of paperwork to fill out and send to the dean's office to fail people. So please don't cheat. Just cite your source, right? This here, it's a, like a condensed if-else, essentially. Um, you should have talked about it in 1500, maybe briefly. I know I mentioned it and said they're ugly, and I won't ever use them. But this is the if. If it's true, you get this, else you get this. They are really cool. I mean, sure, they're cool, and if, if you use them a lot, you'll get used to the syntax. I just, um, I don't know. I, 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 I'm, I don't think it saves a whole lot of time. And it's like, it's not hard to write this. So, I don't know. Just a personal preference. Yeah, for a simple thing, definitely can be great. Um, I don't know. I, I'm very biased to things that um, make me go, huh? And every time I see one of these, I have to remember, this is the true, this is the false. And maybe I just need to use it more, but I just find that obnoxious. So, that's all. Okay, so we can accelerate and we can brake. We're getting, we're getting there. Okay. Was that it for cart so far? Oh, we need a get methods and a use item. Okay. So we'll have a use item. So public void use item. And that will call. We need to check if item does not equal null. Right? We can call item.use. And now we talked about the item needing a cart and the track. So if it needs the track, we need to know what track we're on, right? So either we have the track or it gets passed when it gets used. So either way is okay. I, I think it's probably fine to say, hey, track, track, and keep an instance of track. Protected track, track. That way the cart knows what track it's on. This track is the track. So when you create a cart, you tell it, hey, you're on this track. Go for it. And it keeps a reference there. It's probably perfectly fine. Right, because that way we can then hand it to use the item. When it needs a cart, well, we are the cart, so this is us. 
I'm the cart using it. So this is the cart that's using it. And then the track that we're on is the track that's doing it. We'll use it. And then we're going to set item equal to null. We're going to null out that item. Right, because we've used it. So we can change it and no longer reference it. And it'll say, hey, I'm not, I'm not pointed at an item anymore. So if I want to use an item, great. As long as I have one, if it's not null, I'm pointed at an item. I, I reference an actual item. It exists. We'll use it, given myself as the using cart and the track as the track, and then I'll take it away. Say so I no longer have that item. Okay, and then get methods, right? Let's write a bunch of get methods. Um, sure, we'll put those down here. So let's insert some code, insert a getter for everything. Why not? Okay, you can get the item, you get the speed, get, 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 get. I like it. Done. Okay, how's that feel so far? So we got cart. Okay. Now let's let's come back to track maybe, or do you want to do the subcart subclasses first? Light cart, heavy cart, motorcycle. We can go either route. Either way is okay. Scholar, using code you understand and citing it is really good practice. Really good practice. You definitely want to be able to understand what it is. And then cite your source, right? This is still academia. Right? We still need to cite our sources. And you know what? Even in the real world, it's great to drop a, a link to wherever you found this piece of information. Right? If you if you copied a whole chunk of something, an algorithm, whatever it happens to be, a solution to something, leave a note. Right? Because next time when you go get to that spot in your code, you're looking at it, or someone else is looking at it, like, why did you do it this way? Or, you know, they've got a reference. It's fantastic. There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with comments. I, I apologize for um, not using comments very often. I, I have a tendency to not use them. That's that's definitely um, our my professional um, bend, is, is to say, oh, sure, the, the code is self-documenting. You don't need comments because I have nice variable names. And that's not always true. Right. It's still comments can be very useful in certain occasions. So um, don't, don't let me lead you astray and say that they're terrible. So I'll never say they're terrible. I just, um, I'd much, much rather have cleaner, more clear code. That's all. Okay. So we got those. So we do the subclasses or do you want to move on to track? What do you folks want to see next? Snake Blood, thank you so much for subscribing and donating to the scholarship fund at U of M Dearborn. Thank you. I think, did I show you folks? I, I finally got a chance. I made a donation on their Giving Blue Day. I've got that I can show you. So I've yet to get a payout from Twitch, but I went ahead and did the donation because I think I hit the $50 mark. So I was really excited. That's pretty cool. Subclasses. All right, let's do it. So we had motorcycle here, and now it's upset with us because our constructor doesn't match. So we sure we need a track. Track. Act, track, and then we'll pass that track right here to our superclass constructor. Okay? So we're all the things cart is, and then we're special. Okay? So now we can call the superclass constructor. Now, what, ma what makes motorcycle special? Well, motorcycle, right, we did plus threes in our constructor, and then if we get hit by a shell or slip on a banana peel or go off road, we lose an extra turn from a wipeout. Okay? So we need a way that when we are treating everything as cart, as the superclass type for that to happen. So cart's going to need a method here for spin out because we need a way to interact with cart as the base class and say, hey, you've spun out. And then we need a way to change that behavior in motorcycle because we're overriding it. Okay, so our default behavior here then, right, uh, public void spin out. Uh, and probably it takes a location, maybe? Uh, I'm not sure. We can, we can come up to that later. So if we spin out, we're going to take current speed to zero. Right? So when we spin out, our current speed stops. Whether or not we got hit by a shell, whether or not we ran over a banana, whether or not we spun out on a bend. Right? Went off the track, we spun out. That was our penalty. Okay? That's the spin out there. Okay, so then motorcycle... That needs a way to spit out and then take an extra penalty. So if we need a way to have an extra penalty, we need a way to know that in cart as well. Right? So maybe we have some sort of method or value here, protected boolean oh, lost turn. Lost turn. 
And we could say lost turn is false. But what happens then, so spin out normally doesn't do anything, right? No one else loses a turn except for motorcycle, but we need it to be available here in cart because all that track has is a list of carts. Remember over in track? All we have here is a list of carts. So I don't know that they're motorcycles or if they're light carts or heavy carts. I just know that they're carts. So all the methods need to be at the cart level, and then I can change it or override it at the subclass if I want. So I need a method here then for get whether or not I've done that. And I also need then, let's see, uh, let's insert a getter. I need a getter for that. I also need a way to set that value. Right? So after a cart has lost its turn, I need a way to go and tell it, hey, you're all done. So this one, I actually want a setter for lost turn. So we can get the value if we lost a turn. We'll skip it, and then we can tell it, oh, sure, okay, you've lost your turn. Now I'm going to flip that value back for you. I'm going to set lost turn. Okay, so this one needs a set. The rest of them don't need sets. Right? The way that we interact with them are through accelerate and brake those values or through the constructor okay so then motorcycle what motorcycle needs to do is we're going to add override right? we're going to change the behavior so that the public void spin out right so what we're going to do when we spin out is we're going to do we're going to set our is uh, lost turn to true then we're just going to call super spin out right don't do the same code twice my super class knows how to do this spin out thing I'm not going to repeat it. I'm just going to say, hey, when motorcycle spins out, it sets lost turn to true. That's the only difference. Right? And then it does all the same things the superclass does. Okay? That's it for motorcycle. It's not all that different. Right? But we are customizing the pieces we want to customize, leaving everything else the same in the shared class. Okay? So there's motorcycle. Take a look here at, how about, uh, we'll do light cart next. And we'll say light cart extends cart. Cart, great. I'll take out these comments. And Java NetBean says, oh, no, you don't. You said you did, but you don't. So sure, we want to add a constructor. Look at that. That takes max speed, max acceleration, brake speed, passes them to the superclass constructor. I love it. Now let's go add our modifications. Light cart says plus two to acceleration to brake speed, minus two to max speed. So max speed minus two. Max acceleration plus two. Brake speed plus two. Give that a little format. There we go. Now, what does light cart do special? Right, we did that there. When light cart enters a bend, it gets a chance to break before taking the penalty. Oh, we forgot that. We didn't do bend here yet. So that's right. We didn't we didn't finish that. So the base class here for entering a bend. Right? What happens when we enter a bend? We need to see. So if the bend dot. Oh, uh, bend, we didn't add all the attributes here. Bend has attributes for max speed and position. Let's insert some code here. We need, look at this, a constructor that takes these two attributes. I love it. Yes, you give me max speed, you give me a position on the track, I'll take them. And then we also need gets. So we'll insert some code. We need some getters. There we go. You can get the max speed, you can get the position. Okay. So now, cart. So when we enter a bend, if the bend.getMaxSpeed is less than our current speed, and that's kind of funny. Maybe I'm going to flip that, right? I, I think current speed is probably better to be if that's greater than the max speed. Just just the way you read it. I don't know if that makes any difference, but I like that. If we're going too fast, we spin out. Right? When we enter the bend, if we're going faster than the max speed, we spin out. That's it. Right? You okay with that? So then light cart, then we're going to override that behavior. We're going to override the... Hey, one, thanks so much for throwing your Prime sub out here. The Prime gaming now, because, sure, I mean, Twitch is obviously a gaming platform. We don't do anything educational here, but sure. I'm not salty about them changing that. Uh, so enter bend, enter bend, give it a bend, bend. So we're going to change the behavior. When we're a light cart, we get a chance to break before we are going to spin out. Hey, no, that's so cool. I'm glad uh, you can throw that Twitch Twitch Prime sub to uh, the scholarship fund. That's pretty cool. Ooh, 
Mikey, my goodness, you folks are so generous throwing your, your Prime subs out here. So that's so cool. We're contributing towards the scholarship fund. Look at this. I will show you folks, because I have to prove this to you here, how much money Twitch pays me, right? I can show you. We'll take a, a, a quick break here. I want to I I show you here. Right? We're, we're on the up and up here. I don't want anyone to think I'm getting paid by Twitch to teach the classes I'm getting paid to teach. That's not cool, right? Look at this. So far, view my payouts. No payout yet, but that's okay. Ooh, we're at 68 now. That's exciting. So once I hit 100, Twitch will actually pay me some money here, which is awesome. And then I will show you here. Let's see. Got it here. The gift receipt. I want to make sure it doesn't have all of my info on it, though. <laughs> Let's, uh, let me just grab a screenshot here. How about that? So I'm going to take my address off. Boom. Look at that. Here's my first 50. Zoom. Enhance. 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 Going towards the scholarship fund at U of M Dearborn, College of Engineering and Computer Science. Boom. 50 bucks. That's where all your all the Twitch money's going, folks. Okay. Ooh, wanna be famous? I wanna buy some followers? No thanks. You get out of here. Get. Oh man, his, was his name GTI? I was. Oh, it was, it was Git. <laughs> or GI Tigers. Okay, not as cool. Awesome. So anyway, that's where we're at. Thank you so much for throwing those Prime subs at at the channel here. Appreciate your support. Okay, so when a light cart enters the bend, what do we do? Well, we get a chance to brake first. So we're going to check if our current speed is greater than the bend dot get max speed. What do we want to do? We want to brake. But we're going to call brake. And we'll end. Nope, 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 nope. Brake. And how much do we want to brake? Right before you got to copy the link. Oh, <laughs> from the, the guy. <laughs> okay, well, how much do we want to brake? We want to brake. Well, we don't want to break our max because we only want to break what's going to get me down to the max speed. So I'm going to take my current speed minus the bend dot get max speed. Right? We're going to try and slow down. Oh, a stretch. Thank you, Snake. And I got this really cool uh, pull up bar that goes like in a door frame. The problem is, it's too wide to fit in a regular door frame so i don't understand how that's supposed to work like it doesn't fit in my office door frame but it fits i've got one like wide door frame downstairs in my house so i have it there um and you can just hang on that that gives you a really good stretch and you just kind of hang and then you know you feel bad about yourself and do some pull-ups or chin-ups but i'm a little out of shape i can at most get three which is you know better than none but um I used to be able to do like 10 when i was doing them all the time so got to get back into the habit so if we enter the bend and we're going too fast, we're going to try and break. Now, this might be a huge number. We don't really care, right? But whatever my speed is minus the max, right? That's how much I need to slow down to avoid the penalty. So if it's 100 units because I'm speeding like crazy, it's probably not going to work because it's only going to break my max brake speed. But I'm going to try it and see. Remember, and I know brake is only going to let me break as much as I possibly can. And then we just call super enter bend, given the bend. Right? This is my opportunity to slow down one more time if I'm going too fast before I go into the cart enter bend, which might make me spin out. Okay, again, don't, I mean, we could repeat all the logic here, but why bother? Right? We already know how this works, so I'm going to just leave it. Okay? We all right with this one? And we can do heavy cart. Heavy cart. Okay, so heavy cart. Extends cart. And it says, no, no, you don't. Oh, sure. Okay, we have to add the constructor, please. Sure, I like it. Now, heavy cart gets more speed, right? Heavy cart gets minus two to acceleration brake, but plus two to max. Okay, sure. So max speed plus two, max acceleration minus two, brake speed minus two. Okay, and what makes heavy cart special? Well, heavy cart gets a second item. So when we call add item, oh, we need a way to add an item. Oops. We go back to cart. We don't know how to add an item yet. We don't have a way to do that. 
right? We have item, but the only thing we can do with it is use it and get it. That's not good. We need a way to add an item, okay? So add item, public void, add item, given an item, item. We're going to say if my item is null this time, item, oh, I'm sorry, this dot item. If my this item is null, then my this item can be the item. If it's not, don't do anything. That's it. If we already have an item, trying to add add another doesn't do anything. Right? That's it. But now what heavy cart gets to do is it gets a second item. So we're going to have a private item, second item. And in the constructor, we need to set second item to null, right? Always give your attributes values here. So until we pick up a second item, we have no items. So we're going to override here. We're going to change the behavior of add item. We'll avoid add item. Add item. Give it an item item. Okay, well, what we want to do here, we need to see if my second, uh, so if we have no item, it should be the first item. If we have the first item, it should be the second item. Okay, so we need to change this a little bit here. So um, this one, we're going to have to repeat a little bit of logic, and I'm going to feel a little bit bad about it, but that's okay. Uh, I won't feel too bad about it. Or, or we could just say, hey, let's do super dot add item. Give it the item. So this is going to check to see if we didn't have the first item and add it. Hmm. No, I don't. I don't like it because then then we might add it as a second one here. So we're just going to do it ourselves. So we'll say if our this item is equal to null, then my this item is the item. Elif. Else if. So if first item is not null, if my second item is null. Then my this dot second item, I can just say second item, right? Second item equals the item. That's it. So if I didn't have a first item, it becomes the first. If I did have a first item, I'm in the else. If I don't have a second item, it becomes my second. Perfect. Right? The, the reason why we couldn't call super is because I don't have a way to know whether or not it changed. And then I would still have to check this, and I don't want to set item to the second item if I set item to the first item. And I can't put a call to super inside of an if block here, because it doesn't return a value. I guess we could change add item to return a boolean if we really cared, but I don't know if that matters much at all. Okay, there's add item. And then we also need to change now how we use an item. If we use item. Right, when we use an item, we need to check, hey, if... Hmm. Can we do this the superclass version? Let's see. What does cart have? So when cart uses an item, now I'm going to go over here to the left. I've got a nice like list of all my methods here because I get confused and I have to scroll up and down a lot. Just go look for in the list here. It's really nice. You get this nice little view. So use item says if I don't, if I do have an item, if it's not null, use it, set it to null. I like that. So we're going to try and use the first one. We're going to call the superclass version of use item. So we're going to try and use the first item. Then we can check if first item, uh, if item is null, uh, well, I guess um, that's, that's always going to use it here. So then we can check if second item does not equal null. What, what, so we're going to try and use the first one. It should null it out if we had it. If we didn't have it, no big deal. If we had a second item, then we're going to put it in space of the first item. Item equals second item. And then second item equals null. So if we did have a second, we're going to use the first. And if we have a second, we're going to bump it up to be the first. How's that sound? So that way I can carry a second item. Right? We're overriding that behavior that lets me, now when I add an item, I could possibly add it to our second. And when I use an item, I can possibly bump the second up to the first. The regular item. How's that sound? Okay, I think we're done here for carts. Nope, I don't need... I don't even know what that is. Added some weird import there. Okay. Now, one thing... Um, when, we, when we spin out... Um, 
You know, we might have to change that later. That's okay. We'll come back to that. We'll see if we need to change it later. Okay, so I think we did good on our carts. We feel good on carts. Then we go back to track and make track do all the things, and then we'll come back to items and do all the item things, okay? So track has the list of carts along with their position, just their distance from start. So track here needs... Hmm. We could do this array list of cart positions, or we could have cart also track its position. I think having track cart or cart track its position is probably better. So I'm going to come back to cart and we're going to add a new value. So protected int current position on track. Right, and we'll say, hey, we start at zero. And we also need to get for it. So we'll, I don't know, let's come on down to the bottom or something. We'll insert some code. Insert a getter for current position. So we can get the current position on the track. Okay. If cart is going to be tracking its position, then we need a way to move. Right? Avoid move. So to move, right, the cart needs to take its current position on the track and add to it its current speed. I don't know, move current speed along track. Sure, we can call it anything we want. I think that's that's this is nice and clear. Maybe a little bit better than move. It's going to take its current speed and move along the track. This way, now we can interact with the cart and we can ask the cart to move here. Now we don't have to keep two different lists. Right? Uh, we could. It's just a little bit ugly here. That's why we can just totally avoid this one here. Okay. We'll have our list of bends. We'll have a list of items to pick up along with their position. And this one's still a little ugly too. So maybe we add a a position to item. Now the problem with that is item only as an interface. We can't add attributes to item. Right? I can't say, hey, it has an int for position on track. Right? It's unhappy with that. Because it's an interface. Right? We can't set a value in an interface like that. What we could do is we could define a method position on track. And I don't get position on track. If we wanted. And we can make every item have a method that will tell you what position it's in. We could do that. And then, again, that avoids this whole hassle of having that location here. I like that. All right. Well, so what does track need? Track needs a constructor. Right? So public track. So if we want to create a track, we can ask for all of these things. Sure. We could have all these types given to us. We can have some carts given to us, we can have some bends given to us, and we can have some items given to us. We might also need uh, like an int for total length of the track, maybe. And then we can track the total length. An int total length. Okay. And we can just set all these. Now the problem here, uh, this is bad, is if we just say my this carts equal to carts, right? We have here a shallow copy. I think we talked about this briefly. Does that ring any bells? So where my list of carts just points to this list of carts. So whoever called my constructor, they have a list of carts. If they go change that list of carts, my list of carts changed because I didn't make a copy of them. Remember we talked about making copy constructors? Yeah, we, we talked about that with having copy constructors for our cards. So it might be a good idea to go through and do these copy constructor things. I'm, we're not going to bother right now um, because that wasn't really part of what, what I'd ask you to do. Should copy items. So we need a way to copy them, but we're, we're not doing that right now. So, you know, it's bad, but we're just going to live with it, okay? Because if they go and add another cart all of a sudden, then they've just added it in the middle of my game, possibly. And again, you know... Um, we probably want, once you create the track, you tell what, tell what carts are on it. We want to own those and be in charge of those objects. But that's okay. Items to pick up. And my this.totalLength is the total length. Okay. What else? What else does our track need? I think it's okay right now. Right? So track then, right, needs to... Have the total distance, the series of bends, each bend has the max speed aside. If the cart goes into the bend, crosses the distance, so it should start above the max speed, it'll go off the road and stop. 
Needs a method to return the distance until the bend for a given cart. Max speed of the upcoming bend. Okay, so it needs a way to, to manage all of this. So again, we're not writing the game itself, but we need a way to be able to, to interact with it here. So for all of our carts to move, then, right, we want to have a, a way to do that. So public void, you know, turn. I don't know. I don't know if turn is right. I don't know. Each cart moves. How about move each cart? Okay. So to move each cart then, right, we're going to say for cart cart in carts. Let's go move the carts. Cart.move. Uh, didn't we have a oh, move current speed along track? No, but we need to track to see if they're going to pick up any items or if they're going to enter any bends. So really what we need is the start location is the cart dot get current position get current position on the track they move and then an int for ending location is cart dot get current position on track get current okay and we need to look did they run into any bends and then did they pick up any items so we're going to do the bends first because if you go into a bend at like the first move your first unit you probably aren't going to pick up an item at the end so we're going to check for bends here then so we're going to say for bend bend in bends that's like the the dr seuss book what is that uh uh fox and socks that's one of my favorite books to read is uh bim bends bins bends broom bend bends bins broom you remember that one you guys ever read that one bim bends bends broom i think that's what it was a funny funny uh, tongue twister yeah fox and socks is that lyrics ben bends bims broom bim bends bends broom bims bends 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 bend broom breaks bims bend broom breaks bends band bims band big bands pig bands bim and bend lead bands with boot brooms bends band bangs and bims bands booms pig band boom band big band broom band my poor mouth can't say that no sir I, i've read it a lot my kids like that book i don't have it memorized but i know uh, that part was always fun. Yes, alliteration. I'm fond of tongue twisters. So this is a Wendy's <laughs> scholar. <laughs> uh, all right. So we're going to check and see, did we enter a bend? Okay, so if our start location, right, we need to check. So if my start location was less than what the bend dot get position on track right and my ending location was greater than or equal to the bend dot get position on track so if i started before it and i ended either at or after it right that means i entered the bend Okay, so we'll say cart.enterbend, given the bend. I might spin out, I might not. Right? Robert Redford rode a red Rolls Royce around the Detroit River. Huh. So that's a fun one. So this should enter the bends here. How's that one sound? Now, the problem here, what we have happening, if we enter a bend at like the first position, the first unit of our move, we spin out, we should stop. So cart, actually, we need to fix our enter bend here. Let's see, let's find enter bend. Because what should happen when we spin out is we should stop at that location. So we need to stop at uh, bend.get position on track. We need to change spin out, right? So that we stop at a position, int position. So we'll take our current position on the track and we'll set it to the position. Because if we spun out, we're gonna need to stop there. Okay, and then it makes motorcycle unhappy because spin out needs an int position, right? So we then have to pass position along. And then uh, oh, banana's unhappy. That's all right, we can fix that later. Yeah, we didn't finish that interface. That's okay. So we're on track. So if we spin out on a bend, we will stop 
our speed, and then we'll change our position to that bend. Good. Okay, so we'll, for every cart, we'll move and we'll do that. Then we can see, right, if we got any items. So now we have a new ending location. We need to check, you know, ending location is get its current position on the track because we might have spun out, right? We might have spun out. Oops. Check where we stopped, right? We're going to have tried to go 50 units, whatever our max speed is, um, but maybe we didn't get as far. In French, uh, my French is terrible. I, I took a year, two years, a year or two? I forget how long I took it in high school, and that was long time ago. We actually went to, to Paris um, five years ago uh, while we were hanging out in Ukraine doing our adoption. We had some time, so we, we took some of the kids to, to Paris. And I forgot how to say everything in French. It was really bad. I could count, which, you know, okay, that was good, so I could pay for things. That was about it. Un chasseur, sa chante, chasseur, ses chasseurs sans son chien. I don't know. If not, prof, if you can say that, I'll be impressed. All right, so to get their new ending location, and then we need to see if they picked up any items, right? So then for item, item, and items, we'll do that same logic here. We'll say, isn't it items? Items to pick up. Ah. Well, we're going to check if the start location and their ending location is less than the item dot get position on track. Right? Then they must have picked it up. Cart dot pick up item or get item. So item. Add item. Given the item. And we're just going to try and pick up every single item we get. Right? If we started before it and we ended at or after it, we must have picked it up. We'll pick up the item. Excuse me. Okay? How we feel about moving each cart now. So this is sort of setting up that game logic. So if you didn't have this bit, that's probably okay. Um, right? If you weren't implementing the game, there wasn't anything required here in the rubric. Right? We have the abstract class, we have the heavy cart, we have the light cart, we have the motorcycle, track class, cart, item, positions, bends, methods to interact with everything. Um, this has methods to interact with everything. It was a little vague, right? So don't don't sweat that too much if you didn't have that move loop. Um, then our item interface, right? Okay, now what do we do with items? Are we, we I think we're good here. Oh, we have to drop obstacle at location. Wait, we'll get to that in a minute because we have to figure out our items. Okay. So let's check out item. So we say you have to be able to get a position on the track and then you can use an item. So banana now is missing a method. Okay, let's implement the method, get position on track. Well, to know what position we are, we probably need a constructor. So we, we probably need a place to store this too. So we'll have a private int position on track. And then look, let's add a constructor that takes a position on track. Right, you tell me what position on, we're good. I'm good to go. I like that this defaults to this shadowing that Mr. Gaddis said he's not a fan of, because I feel like this vindicates my position that shadowing is fine. And it's easy to add these this thoughts because that's the default code generation. I'm a fan of that. Okay, so sure we can uh, position on the track. We can get the position on the track. We can just return our position on track. Position on track. Okay, we like that. Great. Now, what do we do when we use an item? Well, we want to drop the obstacle at that location. The location of my cart. Sure. Uh, we could either do cart position, because we have positions now. Um, I like that, because this is a dropping it at a location. We'll say cart.get position on track. Okay, and we're going to go change that here in track to say drop obstacle at location. This just is, is an int position. Well, now I need to track a bunch of positions where we have obstacles. Okay, so private array list. Uh, type integer here because this is just integers. This is what um, obstacles, obstacles on track. Okay, now my constructor needs to initialize this. The other ones came fully initialized. This one we need to initialize. So it equals a new array list of type integer. Okay, we need to add it. So then when I drop an item here, I can take my obstacle on track dot add the position okay so now if i have a, an obstacle on the track well i need to be able to possibly run it over 
So let's check. So we need to loop now when each cart moves to see if it ran over the obstacle. Oh goodness. Now this gets a little tricky um, and the ordering here might be a little bit obnoxious because maybe we want to have the position checked here. Um, so like we're checking all the bends first. We might want to be checking bends and obstacles at the same time. That, that gets difficult. So we're going to do the easy thing, which is not necessarily correct here. It's, it's the easy way, but not 100% correct. And we're not going to feel too bad about it here. We're just going to say for this is an integer um, posi obstacle position in obstacles on track. Let's do the same logic. If my starting location is less than the obstacle and we end after the obstacle or at the obstacle and before or after the obstacle here well we need to spin out right spin out at the obstacle position then we need to take that obstacle off the track right so we're going to take our obstacles on the track and we're going to remove the position and then we're going to break the loop because you can only run into one thing because you spin out. So usually when you're looping through, modifying it is, is considered bad form. In our case, we're stopping right away, so we're probably going to be okay. Um, it's you got to be careful because otherwise, remember, you're going you're gonna to miss it in this for loop. It's, if, if you remove something, you're going to jump over it. And iterating over arrays as you modify them is bad. In our case, we're, we're done as soon as we hit one, so we just stop. Okay. So again, uh, you know, be careful. We'll, we'll leave a note here. So modifying array lists as you iterate over them. That's bad news bears usually, right? Okay. But because we're breaking right away, I think we'll be okay. Um, we might we might need to handle it separately, but we can get we can check that later if we need to. Okay. Uh, and then we'll look for bends. Again, this is sort of out of order. Um, so we need, and then we'll get the new ending location again. Because maybe we spun out. Well, so on, um, when you pick up an item, everyone gets it. This was, it's like we dropped an obstacle. So like if we dropped the banana on the track, then as soon as you run over it, it's probably gone. If, if you left it there and just let everyone spin out, that's okay too. It wasn't very specific about how that worked, but um, right, just the next car to pass that location should spin out. So again, that's a little vague. That's okay if, uh, if that part wasn't super clear. Yeah, but everyone picks up the items. So we don't remove the items to pick up, but we remove the obstacles here. So that's all. Okay. All right, cool. So we can drop a banana on the track. Right, so banana can use itself, can use an item. Drops an obstacle at that location, at the cart's current location, when the cart uses it. Cool. So we got banana. Let's add our... Uh, how about a shell, then? So shell should implements, implements item. So shell is an item. It says, no, we don't. Okay, yeah, please add my methods. We need a private int position on track. We can return that when we get our position turn the position on the track. So we need a constructor. So let's insert some code. Insert our constructor. Yes, please. Oh, I missed it. I missed it. Click the wrong button. Insert. All right. I missed the checkbox. There it is. Check, 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 check. Okay. So you have a position. So how do we use a shell? Well, shell needs to tell the track that it wants to shoot something. So we need a method in track to shoot. I don't know. So we'll have track dot shoot. I don't know, item? Sure, why not? And given what? What well, needs the cart to get current position? Okay, well, track doesn't have a shoot item method, so we want to add one. We have to create a method. Come back over to track. And now we have a shoot item. So to shoot an item here, we need to find the next cart. All right, so we're going to say for cart, cart, in carts. We need to find the one that is ahead. So the um, cart nearest cart, we're going to start off as null because we don't have one currently. 
we need to see if we can find a nearest cart. Okay. So if we find a cart who's ahead here, so if cart.get current position on track is greater than the current position on the track. If it is, we found someone who's ahead. Now we can check if nearest cart does not equal null, or if it is null, right, then it must be the nearest cart. If it's not null, right, else, well, I need to see, is it closer? So it's closer if the current position is less than. So if, if uh, I guess I could go in the else if, sure, why not else? If the cart.get current position on track is less than the nearest cart dot get current position on track. Sorry, it's a, a little wide there. So we're saying if I if there is no nearest, it is the nearest. If I have a nearest, let's see, is this one less than? That means it's closer. So if that's true, my nearest cart is the cart. Otherwise the nearest cart stays the nearest cart. Right? If your position is further greater than, then we don't change. Okay, so all of that then happens to see who is the nearest cart, and then if nearest cart is not null, then nearest cart dot spin out, and it spins out at its current position, right? The nearest cart dot get current position. Because right? it shoots ahead, so it just spins out in its location. So it doesn't go anywhere where like, if we spun out at our current position we'd actually be like pulling it back on the track which is wrong it's not a tractor beam right it just spins out in its location it's just going to change its speed to zero okay so it can shoot an item cool then we need mushroom let's add a no not a folder add a new class for mushroom okay and this implements item, the item interface. That being says, no, it doesn't. So we say, yeah, sure, give me some code. We need a private int position on track. On track. And then we need a constructor. Insert some code. A constructor that takes that value. Check, 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 check. To get the position on the track, we just return that value. Boom. Okay. Now what does mushroom do? Mushroom was going to give the cart a speed boost, right? Now, if you wanted to put it above max, great. If you wanted to um, set it to max, that's cool too. Either one. I like the idea of making it go super fast. So cart dot um, speed boost. Or mushroom boost or something. I don't know, right? Oh, we don't have a method. Okay, well, let's add a method then to interact with that. So let's go to cart here. Let's add speed boost. So where is speed boost? Let's see, right here. Let's take this out. So we'll say sure. So my current speed then um, should equal max speed plus 10. I don't know, 5, 10, it doesn't matter. Like, or, or maybe we could even have it here, like int um, speed to go above max. Sure, why not? I like that. So then maybe maybe the mushroom then tells us well, this one maybe goes 10 above max. And maybe we can then have a different mushroom that goes 15 above max or like, I don't know. Sure. But then what has to happen when cart moves, right? Because it only lasts for a little while. We want to make sure that we go back to our regular speed. So we can check if my current speed then is greater than the max speed. Let's reset. Current speed equals max. Max speed. Max, max speed. Okay, so we'll, we'll let it move to the speed, extra speed, and then we'll reset. Again, you could have some sort of timer, some sort of counter for, you know, you get a speed burst for three rounds, four rounds, whatever it is. And we can have all sorts of different ways to implement that. So this is just for one turn. Not a big deal. Okay. Then we have our items, right? So banana gets dropped, shell gets shot, mushroom gets our, yeah, for, for one turn, then reduces speed to max speed. Look at that. That's, I even asked you to do that. Perfect. All right, does that hit all the things in our game here? OK, 
think that hits all those objects or all the, the objectives. And again, we don't actually have the game loop. We could do that in like project three, then could say, hey, which cart do you want to drive? We could add that cart. We could set up a bunch of bends. We could have the random, or we could put a bunch of items. Any way we wanted to set up the track, we could do here in main, whether or not we ask the user or not, and then we could run it, right? So to interact with those, those objects, right? Track probably needs a way to get a bunch of these values back out. Maybe we'll have some gets. I don't know. Insert some gets. And again, gets you have to be careful with here. Um, when we just return here, and just uh, this is dangerous. We're giving them full access. So we maybe we want copies, right? Those are better. Now the problem is though, if we give them copies, they can't actually change that cart. They're better sometimes. So like. If project three was to say, hey, you're cart number one, you're a heavy cart, what do you want to do this turn? Do you want to accelerate? Do you want to brake? Do you want to use an item? And we told them we wanted to do something. If we don't have the actual reference, well, we're not going to change the one that's on the track. So in some cases, we do want to give a reference here. Right? So maybe we do want to give them, but maybe we don't want to give them the, the entire array list. Maybe we want to give them individual carts. I don't know. We've got lots of options here. So just be careful. So like copies are not always the right answer here. In this case, we don't want copies, right? Because then they can't actually modify our original cart. So we could either add public methods to interact with the carts, or we could just give them access to it. Right? We got we have options. Um, same for all these here. Okay. Let's see. So that way they could go through each cart. They could accelerate, make a break, do whatever, and then we could call move each cart. So that's like a turn-based racing game. So each cart picks its option. We do the thing, and then we move them all along the track. Okay. So I think we're pretty good there. Let's uh, let's commit this here. So this is Project 3 solved. Commit and push. Oh my goodness, it's already 11.20. I'm sorry. Went a little long. I guess it was all my, my side stories that were had nothing to do with the project. I'm just as spacey in the real life, so you're getting the authentic experience here. All right, and there was one, what did I do here? I had one change here. Oh yeah, we have to handle lost turns. That's right, so um, you need to check in our loop here then that moves carts. No, I don't know if we have space for that. All right, let's see. So we should handle that, right? That was the, the other thing we were missing. So as we're moving each cart, there we go. Move each cart on the track. Which track? There we go. Move each cart. So if cart dot is lost turn, then we'll call set lost turn. No, 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 no. Set lost turn to false. Else, we'll do this thing. So let's move all of this into the else. Oof! My goodness. So if they lost their turn, nothing happens, right? They, we uncheck that they lost their turn, and then we go back, right? Or maybe this needs to happen in the loop here in project because. We, they wouldn't be able to accelerate. Right? We, I mean, we've got we've got some options here. So maybe they just get skipped over in the other loop, and then this one triggers it. So you know, probably check in the main loop to not let it accelerate. There wasn't any le there wasn't any coffee left snake. That's that's just mean. I'm sorry. Hey, I'm gonna take a break in a minute. Okay. All right. So I think then we're handling the lost turn a little bit better there. That's good. And let's see. And the lost turns. That's oh on track. There we go. Yeah, I checked. Oh, and we can check whether or not the race is over. I think we should be able to do that too. That's a good idea. Yeah. Cool. So go. Okay. Good. 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 We'll see if the race is over. Why not? So have a public boolean is race over. And again, we'll just loop through. We'll say for each. Cart cart in carts. If the cart dot get current position on the track is 
greater than or equal to the total length. We return true. If we've looped through all of our cards and we haven't returned true, we're going to return false. Game's not race isn't over yet. If you ain't first, you're last. I mean, whether you win by an inch or a mile, winning is winning, right? Pretty sure that's a that's a solid quote from Vin Diesel. Okay. All right, I think we'll call this good here then. So we'll add the, you know, is race over? Is race over? And then what else do we have? The uh, handling lost turn and lost turns. Okay. All right, so why don't we take 10 and we'll come back. We got a little, little bit of time to talk about exceptions. Uh, if we don't get it all done, that's all right. We'll take care of it on Thursday. The Ballad of Ricky Bobby. <laughs> all right. So why don't we take a couple minutes? I'll throw some music back on for you folks. Go get yourself some coffee. And we'll come back in about 10. Let's see. Put that on. There we go. All right, cool. We'll be back in a minute, folks.
Hey folks, welcome on back. Alright, I started my next pot of coffee, but I did not finish yet. I'm gonna need to go run down and get it when it finishes. Okay. So let's start a new project. Let's talk about exceptions here. We put this in 2151. And what chapter is exceptions? Let's see. What chapter is that? Let's take a peek here. Uh, Comic Sans, yes, yes, uh, it is a more dyslexic friendly font. All right, let's see. Yeah, they have some specialized ones, but not everyone has those fonts installed, so I tend to just default to Comic Sans. Um, makes it easier for my daughter to read stuff. Let's see. Okay, chapter 11. There we go, chapter 11. Chapter 11. Exceptions. So exceptions are fantastic. Uh, if you had me for 1500, we talked briefly about exceptions. Uh, well, we'll talk more about them, go more in depth, and how we can do our own cool exceptions and stuff, uh, which is fun. Give that a close. Okay, so what exceptions are are bad things, exceptional situations, and typically they'll cause our program to crash. So you might be familiar with this one here. So if we say scanner keyboard equals a new scanner, given system.in, and we say uh, enter a number, and then, oh yeah, yes Java, I want a scanner please. And we say an int number, Number is integer dot parse int of keyboard dot next line. Right, we try and convert the thing you typed in into a number. Right, you're familiar with this. So if we run this, oh, and we'll just spit out the number. Right, your number is plus number. Okay, we'll give this one a run. Hydration. Yeah, I left my coffee cup downstairs. I, I was making another pot of espresso. The kids needed some stuff, so I didn't get it started right away. Didn't finish in time. Probably in like five minutes, I can go run downstairs and get it. I'm excited. Okay, got to change this here. I know, right? All right. Don't compile on save. I don't know why it does that. It's so obnoxious. There we go. Now let's run. All right, let's enter a number. Come on. And let's be a smart aleck here. Enter a number. A number. Oh! Boom! This is an exception. Exception in thread main, java.lang.number format exception for input string A number. We crashed. We had an exception. A bad thing happened here. So we might be familiar with these crashing and all these red, red errors. So this is a stack trace. Remember, you read them bottom up. So it happened here at line 13 of my program. It then went to parse int, to parse int, to number format exception. So look for where it is in your code here. Hey, okay, bottom up. Don't worry about those XML ones, uh, but you have the bottom up line here um, for our code, right? line 13. That's where our problem is. So if we're doing something that might cause an exception and we don't want to crash because we're good people, Right. And I don't know, um, maybe I'm just weird and, and an old grumpy curmudgeon now, uh, but like nothing upsets me more than having a program crash. Pro probably that's because I, I know they shouldn't, and that, that you know there's ways to handle this gracefully. And it upsets me when software engineers and people ship code that crashes, because it really just should not. Because uh, right? we can handle them. We, we can deal with exceptions, and that's what we should do. Um, and in the real world, if someone's using your application, uh, and if it crashes on them, they're going to hate your application, and they're going to say it's a crappy application, despite all the good things it does. They're going to remember the times it crashes. So we really want to avoid crashes to keep our people happy. So what we can do, if we think an exception might happen, we can use this keyword called try. And anything that might cause an exception can go in a try block. Literally every Bethesda game. <laughs> yeah, I mean... Some games are, are, are good enough that we'll put up for it, put up with it, I guess, but we'll still complain about it. 
what was that game? Was it Fallout something or other? Like, they made this whole joke that it was, you know, th two-thirds complete or something when they shipped it. Um, I've, I've managed to, to crash the Elder Scrolls. Um, I've managed to crash Skyrim. Or at least bug it out. I don't know if it actually crash crashed. I think it did. I think I've crashed it. Um, I've, I've had some trouble with Skyrim. But anyway, so we, we put a tri block. Yeah, was it Fallout 76? There was some really funny joke about that. Let me see if I can find it. This is worth it. Fallout 76. I think it was a pizza. I think that was the joke. No. It was like a picture of a pizza and the middle was cut out of it. And it was the Fallout 76 pizza. And they're like, enjoy, enjoy your pizza. It's, it's missing pieces, so we're not going to replace it. I forget. It was a funny meme. Okay. So we, a try block. And then what we do is we get to use a catch block. So when we try something, we can catch exceptions. And we say, hey, if you know the particular type of exception, like a number format exception, we throw this in here. So I'm going to catch specifically a number format exception. I'm going to call it exception here. And then we can do something in our catch. And we might pass out, I don't know, the um, exception. Exception has a message. You can get message off of it, which is cool. We can print out the message. So now, when we try and enter a value, we get a number, because that's what it told me to do. Uh, the message for input string, and oh, that's not a very good message there, is it? So sometimes the message isn't great. So maybe we'll just say that isn't a number. Okay, sure. Okay. Now maybe if we want them to enter a number, maybe we do this in a loop. Maybe we'll say int number equals oh, like negative one. And while number equals negative one, we want to keep on doing this thing. And we can stick them in a loop that catches it. And we don't need to re reassign number. We need to say number is parsint. And never never played the Elder Scrolls online. Just uh, Skyrim. Uh, I, I missed some games in, uh, while I was busy. But still working on my Skyrim playthrough. I just started it in 2019, though. So I'm not, not too far in. Only like 100-something hours. But I'm, I'm a big fan of side quests. So I like, it, I like the adventure piece of that. So we're just going to loop using some sort of sentinel value. I guess we could do. Right? And that's a little bit ugly, maybe, but then we'll have number later on in our code. Oh, here. Let's move that out here, then. And then we can print out number when we're done. There we go. So we'll try and parse the number. We'll catch the exception. That isn't a number. And then we'll just keep on looping again and again and again. So enter a number. ASDF. That's not a number. ASDF. Not a number. 10. When we finally get a number, we get out of our loop. Yeah, I've got... Uh, Oblivion was the one before it, right? That was four. I think I've got a copy of it on Steam. I just haven't... I wanted to finish Skyrim before I played the, the, the previous one. I, th I think a long time ago I played whatever was number two. I think I played that one. I missed three and four. And I jumped right into Skyrim. So this loop is kind of bad. So we could do this ugly thing. You could say while true, and then we could break the loop. Not a big fan of that. Um... You know, maybe, I think this is probably better. We could have a boolean success, or I don't know, or fail. It's true. Failed, maybe? How about failed? We could say while failed, and then we could say failed equals false. I like this, because that way it's a nice natural break instead of using the break keyword. I just don't like the break keyword. That's just me. Um, it does the exact same thing here, so it's kind of silly, but... Now, I mean, I heard Fallout was good, but, um, or at least... Some of it was fun to play. So if we enter gibberish, we just keep getting stuck in a loop. As soon as we give it a number, we're done. We get our number back out. So this is trying, because I know an exception might happen, and then catching the exception and handling it gracefully. Making sure it doesn't crash my program. Yeah, if you've got pro strats for the games, uh, we've got a, a gaming channel in the Discord. Um, definitely. Uh, we, can, we can put some there. Or we can make extra channels if we want specific game genres, but um, we can chat there too. Um, yeah, so we're going to try and we're going to catch. Okay, so this is handling exceptions. The other thing we can do here, 
Let's uh, add a new class here. Let's do, uh, we'll just do a silly one here. Uh, how about beverage? And we'll have a beverage class here that has a private int for max volume in milliliters, right? Always use your, your units, right? You should always have units because otherwise it's really vague here. And then we'll have a private int for current volume. Volume in milliliters. Milliliters, there we go. And we'll add a constructor. I'm gonna insert a constructor here. And I want just max, right? I'm gonna assume that current is zero till we fill it. And I'm gonna add methods for fill, fill, which will set my current to the max. Okay, so we fill it up and then we need a method for drink. So public void drink. And this one needs an int milliliters to drink. Right, remember our fundamentals of object-oriented programming? We have a couple rules. We follow, uh, we, we have this principle of encapsulation. We're taking all of our details and we're hiding them away. We just give you public access to the methods and you interact with that abstract public interface through the abstraction principle. Right, you don't need to know the details. You just need to know the methods. Well, what, part of encapsulation means we're protecting our values. We're making sure that we have good values and we don't allow ourselves to be put in a bad state. So if you try and drink more milliliters than exist, I need to tell you somehow. And what you were probably tempted to do previously, right? We'd say milliliters drink if that's greater than the current volume of milliliters. You were probably tempted to do something like this. You can't drink that much. Ah, error message here, right? Something, something silly. This is really bad form. Don't do this. Okay? Because our classes are beautiful and amazing and wonderful, and we're going to be able to reuse them all over the place. And there's no guarantee that my beverage class here has anything to do with a console application where you can read and write stuff at the console. Maybe we're going to use it in a web application. Hey, you could take the, the JSP PHP class um, and learn more about that doing Java in a web application. Maybe you can do it in a mobile application. Take the Android class that we have. Uh, learn about doing that. Maybe we'll use it in a graphical user interface. Hey, we're going to do that in next week, right? If you write stuff out to the standard output, no one's going to see this, right? So this is stupid. Right? Don't do this because no one's going to see it. it. It's pointless, right? What we do is we throw exceptions, right? When you throw an exception, it forces whoever called this method to handle it or crash. And again, we're not going to crash because crashing is bad. So we're going to have to handle that exception. And whoever called that method is probably probably knows how to talk to their user, whether or not it's a pop-up in a mobile application, whether or not it's a message in a web application, whether or not it is know, something, right? Some Something in the graphical user interface. So we're going to use an exception instead. So don't do this, right? What we're going to do is we're going to say throw a new... And there's all sorts of exceptions in Java. Go check out the Java API. So Java 8 API, uh, go look at this up. And we want uh, exception here. There's all sorts, of, all sorts of built in ones. Now you can make your own too. You can extend exception, you can subclass it. These are subclasses of exception. Now it's something about argument. I feel like it's in there somewhere, but I don't see it in the list right now, but it's out there. So these are all sorts of existing exceptions we can use. And I think we have one it's like argument, illegal argument exception. There we go. Not enough left in the cup. I don't know. But we give it some sort of message if you want here. So if you try to drink too much, we throw an exception, boom. As soon as an exception happens, I, I think I forgot to mention this too. When an exception happens, code stops running. So if the exception happens here, we never set fa failed to false. Because the exception happens, we jump right to catch. Sorry, that was an important detail. So when an exception happens, code stops. And then we go right to catch. Okay? So if we throw an exception here, method stops. We never get here. Otherwise, we'll take our current volume in milliliters. We'll subtract out the milliliters to drink. And life is good. Okay? So if I want to drink a beverage, right, we'll make a beverage. Uh, beverage coffee equals new beverage. And we'll say there's, I don't know, 500 milliliters there. That's, I wish, but that's okay. And then we'll say coffee.drink. And let's try and drink 1,000 milliliters. Right, when we run this, 
Let's give it a, a number here first. Come on, number 10, sure. Boom, illegal argument exception. Not enough left in the cup. Right, that was our message here. It happened at beverage line 22 from main line 30. So main line 30 called beverage line 22. An exception happened here. It's just some example code. Yeah, we, we are drinking from our beverage. Right? We wrote a beverage class. So a class's job, right? One of those, one of the principles of encapsulation is we want to make sure we don't put ourselves in a bad state. We should not let someone call one of our public methods and make us in a bad state. Right? We need to protect our details. Right? We need to protect the integrity of our class. So if you try and drink too much and I don't have that many milliliters left, boom, I'm throwing an exception. You can't do that. Right? Because this is my way of communicating with another class. Right? If you do a bad thing to me, I'm going to say, you can't do that. That's illegal. Right? So this is how classes are supposed to communicate. Bad things happened. Oh, you want a dad joke? I love it. I love it. We'll, we'll tell a dad joke and then we will wrap up and go raid someone else for fun. And we'll come back on Thursday. We'll talk a little bit more about exceptions, and then we'll get to our um, advanced file I.O. might take us a little longer. So, you know, I've uh, people say I'm a little weird, and that's okay, man. I'm a weird person, but uh, I've always been suspicious of stairs. They're always up to something. It's uh, I don't know. I, just, I don't trust them. All right, so let me commit this code here. This is some exceptions. Examples, commit and push. Yes, yep, um, we're gonna do that because we need to make saves for our final project, for our game. So we'll definitely cover advanced file IO. And we'll spend a little extra time on it if we, if we can't finish it all in one lecture. Okay, we'll take some time here. All right, so let's take a look, see who we can go visit here. What friends do we have here on Twitch? Let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, we can do psychology. We can go check out our friend Trey doing stocks. We could go check out more Vim stuff, um, car mechanics. We got lots of options here. Got lots of good options. Uh, chemistry, I don't think we can, uh, maybe we can see if we can read, yeah, I like chemistry, but sometimes she has rates turned off on her channel. Nope, we can't. Bummer. That's all right. Let's see. Uh, all right. No votes. Okay, let's, uh, Let's go look at some psychology. It's, that's that's really interesting stuff, actually. It's uh, the the soft skills and uh, people skills. Oh, you think Trey? All right, well, we can vote for Trey. That's fine. We can go check out some stock trading too. That's interesting stuff. Head on over that way. All right, folks. We'll go see if we can learn something about some stocks. Yeah. Th thanks so much for hanging out, Not Prof. Good to see you, folks. Take care. I've got office hours today, this afternoon. And uh, Wednesday and a little bit Thursday. We'll chat Thursday morning if you don't have any other questions.